All right, you guys, welcome to this Zoom webinar about optimizing your mood and your mindset. I am so excited to just dive into letting go of overwhelm as a lifestyle because that is a badge of honor that we wear. Um, but first and foremost, Dr. Sean, welcome. Hey, it's great to be here. And I love <laughs> your title. Like, I love that. I love that idea. It's like, you know, we were just chit chatting before we started going live about like, What's going on? I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so busy. And blah, 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 blah. blah. You know, it's all self-inflicted, you know, of course, but. <laughs> totally, totally. You guys, if you are not familiar with Dr. Sean Talbot, he is one of my favorite human beings on this planet. Dr. Sean is a nutritional biochemist, a leading expert in microbiome health, the author of so many books, which we're going to talk about this one today. <laughs> But the author of so many books on cortisol and the microbiome, and one of my favorite things about you is that you are an exercise nut like the rest of us. You sat on the Olympic board advising athletes on the proper supplementation, proper habits, all the things. And I think down deep, we are all aspiring athletes, right? We all right. want to. We all want to be that person. And I am just so excited to have this conversation with you. So thank you for being here, um, you guys. If yeah. you're here, if you're here live, drop a live in the in the chats below. If you catch this on the replay, drop a replay in the comments below. Doctor Sean, can you see the comments? Um, I can see the chat. I don't. I I'm not on the Facebook, so I don't. I don't see the comments, but. If people on Zoom uh, put in something in the chat, I think I can, I think I'll be able to see that. Yeah. If you are here and you want to chat, let's make this an interactive conversation. We'll hope that I have this set up, set up right. The uh, IT skills are maybe not my best quality, but we're trying here. Um, so Dr. Sean, let's jump into this. And I love that we were chit-chatting before about like all the chaos, like you've got construction going, there's all <laughs> things happening on your end. We were chatting about the fact that for me, in the last year, I got engaged, I moved, I got married, just, you know, a couple of things happening. So let's unpack the loaded question of what does it mean to manage the overwhelm? What does it mean to actually be happy? <laughs> yeah, well, it's, you know, people people who are, well, you probably heard the, heard the, this, the, this old saying, if you want to get something done, find a busy person to mm -hmm. do it, right? And usually it's mm -hmm. find a busy woman because they're usually better at getting <laughs> getting shit done. Right. So <laughs> I can say that, right. On the, on the right. Right. You can say that for sure. Um, but it's, it's so, you know, people who are busy don't usually want to be not busy, right. People who are stressed and have tons of things going on. They're usually not the kind of people who, you know, you want to hear, Oh, you need to take it down a notch. You need to take something off your to-do list, right. They're mm -hmm. usually looking for ways to expand their to-do list and be, be more impactful at what they're trying to do. So a lot of the work that I do is, uh, is around stress and around, you know, stress response and stress physiology mm -hmm. and metabolism and all that kind of stuff. But I'm more inclined to say to somebody, Hey, if you need to lower your stress, there's things we can do there. But how about if we can raise your resilience, which is your ability to handle stress. And it's not, it's not just, you know, we're teaching people to be tougher, you know, and to white knuckle their way through a stressful situation, but there are ways that we can help people to something that we call cognitive flexibility help them form strategies better, help them solve problems better, help them not be stressed out by the average things and and help them handle their stress better. It's called it's called resilience. And mm -hmm. that is a, that's what a lot of people are looking for these days because this stressful world's not going away, right? No, no, and it's, it's not about yeah, it's not about getting rid of the stress. And this is a concept that's really new to me. So also everyone is blowing up my cell phone. The chat's disabled. I didn't do it right. I I don't know. Like <laughs> I, 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 I can't, I can't, uh, win for trying, I guess with the chat thread, I do have someone you guys who's trying to fix it. Um, we'll see if we can't make that happen. I don't know from being right here, how I can, I say choke. So check show chat in the previews. I don't see where I can do that here, which is a bummer. But if you have my cell phone number, if you want to Facebook message me, let's I, I can pay attention to all the things. Um, but one thing that I wanted to, to kick this off with, I'm going to share my screen. Let's see if I have this skill today. I feel like <laughs> today, today, today's been a day. I'll tell you that much. Uh, let's see where I have this. 
I am going to share my screen about the mental wellness continuum. And I feel like we can call that the stress continuum. You can call it the mental wellness continuum, but it's about where do you feel that you are on this scale? Let's pull up the scale. One, here we go. Look at these mad skills I have right now. Look at that. Can you see it? Yeah, yeah, looks great. All right, you guys. So if you are, you're going to have to put this in the Facebook group and Oh, Monica has raised her hand. Hold on. I'm getting all excited. There are people here. Somebody fixed it. Yeah. Can you see the chat? Dr. Sean, can you guys comment in the chats if you're here? Q&A, the chat is disabled. Chat is disabled so we can post questions. Okay, I can see the questions in the Q&A. Yeah, so the Q&A, yeah, it looks like the Q&A is working. So people can put questions there if they have them. And then we can, we can just... Uh... Keep an eye on it and answer, answer oh, the questions guys, as, listen, they, as they come in. My stress resilience is so high. I'm in the optimized category here. I'm not even going to let this bother me. So just use the, <laughs> use, the, use the Q&A. We will pay attention. But what I would love to know and put it in the Q&A, let's treat this like a chat box. Where are you on this scale? And Dr. Sean, the struggling is zero. The numbers aren't on the scale, but it's like zero, yeah. one, two, three. Right. Is that what it is? And then fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, 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 you know, the, 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 it isn't so important, like what number you are, but it's important to understand that it is a continuum, right? That we're all on this continuum somewhere. And I was just, I was just, I was just writing about this this morning. I, I, I posted this out on LinkedIn. I posted it on Facebook. Um, a couple of days ago, Elmo, right? You know, Elmo, the little red monster from Sesame oh, Street. My, my kids were Elmo for many years in a row. Yeah, El, yeah, exactly. My yeah. kids were Elmo, Elmo fanatics. Um, yeah. Elmo the other day um, posted on his Twitter account or X, whatever that's called now. He said, hey, it's Elmo. I'm just checking in. How is everyone doing? And apparently like a hundred million people saw this and commented and said, like, I'm actually not doing very well. I'm actually a little bit depressed. I'm actually exhausted. I'm actually I can't sleep. I'm actually like all this kind of stuff. And so all CNN is writing about it and the Boston Globe where I live is writing about it and saying like, hey, this mental wellness problem is a big problem, you know, and you know, here at Amari, you know, we've been talking about this for seven years and trying to get people to open up and talk and, you know, it, be honest about, are they struggling or are they just, you know, fine and they're, and they're faking it. You know? mm -hmm. um, oh, you know, I love that phrase. <laughs> right. And so it, I, I just thought it was cool. Like here's this little pretend Sesame street monster that's getting people to talk about this. I think it's awesome. But I, I also, what I, what I wrote about this morning was we can't have this conversation without understanding that a lot of how we feel comes from the inside. It comes from our gut and it comes from our microbiome and it comes from our stress signals. And those are all things that we can naturally modulate. So I want people to talk about it because it makes it, it brings it out into the open and it lets people know like, hey, that person doesn't really have it all together. That person is is struggling in all these different ways that, you know, that, that the rest of us are, you know? Mm -hmm. So anyway, this continuum means that no matter where you are, we can meet you there and we have some solutions to help you go from struggling to fine. And fine is like not where you're supposed to be, but it's where a lot of people are and they just feel kind of blah all the time. They don't feel optimized. And so no matter where you are, there's a set of solutions for you. Even if you are optimized, you might want to be more optimized. Like that person that wants to be able to do more and be more impactful in whatever they're working on. So yes, yeah, it's, I, a, it's important. I think I can speak for most of the people on this webinar where I can especially know the moment in time when my husband died and I was managing it all. I was fine. I was in the middle of this continuum, fatigued. I had, we talk about short fuse. I had no patience whatsoever for anything or anyone, brain fog, all of the things. And I just assumed that this is what it is. Like this is, this is where I'm now going to live life because of external circumstances. And I didn't quite understand. I couldn't connect the dots to how do I get from fine to optimize, to energetic, right. calm, happy, because I think we all want to be on the end of this continuum, but it's like, how do I get there? And I right. was listening, I was listening because I love audio, audio books, 
But in this amazing book that you wrote, one nugget that I was listening to the other day was that 90% of the people that go to the doctor, this is a quote from you, are due to stress-related issues. And right. my mind just went like, oh my gosh. Right, right. Because that stress, right? Once you're stressed, that changes the entire physiology and metabolism of the body where you know, it's you're stressed out here in your brain. You're stressed out because of the things around in your world. You're stressed out because of the, you know, what our 24 seven lifestyles are. That leads to an increase in stress hormones like cortisol. That cortisol can interfere with your neurotransmitters like serotonin. So then you're mm -hmm. sad. It interferes with your thyroid hormone. So then your your overall metabolism is down and you gain weight. It interferes with your 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 mitochondria's ability to make energy. So then you're fatigued all the time. It interferes with 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 other neurotransmitters like norepinephrine in your brain. So you can't focus and you have brain fog, right? So mm -hmm. that stress is throws up a monkey wrench into all of this physiology. And one of the ways that it, it leads to persistent stress is that that stress, the stress we experience changes our microbiome it changes the bacteria in our gut so now instead of making serotonin and dopamine and all the you know, happy chemicals we make more of these inflammatory chemicals that not only you know, so first of all you feel you feel crummy because you don't have enough of the feel good but now you feel bad because you have more of these inflammatory chemicals and that can make mm -hmm. you feel achy and tired and sluggish and just just awful and people go well i guess I guess this is how I'm supposed to feel because, because I'm 50 or because I have three kids or because of my husband or my wife or my job, whatever, my, whatever, right. You whatever. put on something and you go, I, I, everybody's like this and everybody is like this, but everybody doesn't have to be like this, right? We can be like those optimized people if we get all these signals back in balance. And it's actually a lot easier than it sounds. You know, someone who's down and they feel like they're a one on that, on that continuum, you know, they're way down at the mm -hmm. struggling side. They don't even think that optimized is 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 a is a potential for them, right? They're like, oh, right. it's way out there. Forget it. It's unattainable. But it's actually very attainable with just a couple of little tweaks of these of these biochemical signals. Well, let's talk about the tweaks. So let's let's talk about the actions that we can take to get from that one to two to three, because we want to walk the continuum until you get yep. to 10. And if you're at eight, you want to walk the continuum until you get to 20. Like, right, right. And no that's it. Yeah. And yeah. that's a really important thing for people to understand, right? You don't go from a one to a 10, right? It doesn't happen overnight like that. There's no way to do that. When we study psychological mood state, they, they, they go on these like, like a pretty planned trajectory, right? There's things, if you're a one, there's things we can do to help you feel good that day. So we can lower your tension. We can lower your stress a little bit. We can bring back your energy levels a little bit, right? On day one. And that's easy. And those are, you know, those are nutrients that we'll use like, like theanine, for example, is one that I, that I love to use because that can lower your stress and raise your ability to focus. So we call that relaxed alertness in the athletes that I used to work with, we would call that being in the zone. So we can give somebody theanine and they'll feel better like within an hour in terms, in terms of those feelings, but they might not feel better for a month or two months if they're really depressed because that's something where we have to completely rebuild their microbiome and get rid of the bad bacteria, give them the good bacteria, but that's attainable for them. And so over the course of going from day one to month one, we can help them with other slices of the, of the mental wellness continuum. We can help them with their brain fog. We can improve their resilience. We can help them focus better, you know, boop, 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 boop. And it's, but it is that walking the journey, just like you said, mm -hmm. Dana. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are familiar with theanine. They're like, oh, I, I take a theanine supplement. Yep. And it's it's also like one of the other things that I have really learned from you is the combination of the things that you're taking, that there are a lot of really good ingredients out there that you can run to the store and grab. And that will help. The theanine will help with your lowering the feelings of tension and feeling a little bit better. But by itself, it's only doing so much. Right. Exactly. It's like, it, it's, it's just like, it's just, a, you know, it's as effective as it is. It's just a drop in the bucket because if we think of this gut brain axis as this coordinated signaling system, you can affect one little piece of it. But if the other pieces of it are out of balance, then it's like, you're, you're, you're not going to get the kinds of benefits that are, that are available. But if you can say, all right, let's fix an imbalance here in the gut. 
and mm -hmm. let's fix another imbalance here because I'm over inflamed. And let's fix another imbalance here because my nervous system is sort of staticky and we want that signal to be clear mm -hmm. and et cetera, et cetera. So if we think of it as this like, you know, step by step by step system of communication all the way from the gut to the brain, mm -hmm. we can bring together a bunch of different ingredients and say, okay, this one works here and that one works there and that one works there because you don't want to take something like, a, you know, like a theanine that's going to work in the brain. But if, you're, if your big source of imbalance is in the gut, that theanine isn't doing anything to the gut. And right. it, that's where you're, that's where 90% of your serotonin is coming from. So, right. you know, you got, you, Oh, I you love that. Idea. Like, like the 90% of serotonin. So most, most people, let's go back to the 90%, go to the doctor and the issue is stress. So yeah. you go to the doctor, your problem is stress. You're maybe not, you don't have enough serotonin. You're not happy. You're not whatever you're prescribed an SSRI because yeah. they're, tr they're treating your brain when really it's a, it's a gut function. And so now you've crawled down or you've walked down this path of, I don't even know what to call that, but how do you, how do you come back and how can we fix the gut to overcome the depression, the anxiety, the I'm on the very end of that mental wellness continuum how yeah. can I bring myself forward knowing that I've already gone to the doctor because I'm 90% of the people like 90% yeah. of the people that's huge. And yeah. they're going to the doctor for a problem. And the doctor is giving them a solution that's maybe helping one element, right? One little piece of that. Yeah. So, so, so let's use that as an example, because there's probably a lot of people who are watching right now or watching on replay that are in exactly the same scenario that you just described, right? They feel terrible. They go to the doctor and they they generally don't say to their to their physician, they generally don't say, hey, doc, I'm depressed, right? Usually they'll go in and they'll say, hey, I, I feel off. I feel tired. I feel just I just feel kind of blah all the time, right? I just don't I don't feel like myself, you know, mm -hmm. and the doctor looks at that and goes, well, here's what I have, right? In defense of the physician, the poor physician that's standing there and saying, well, I don't have anything in my in my bag that treats blah. I don't have anything that treats fatigue or, you know, I don't have anything that street, treats the stressful world that we live in, but I do have this antidepressant I can give you, and that'll probably help you feel less bad. And that, that's what they do. They help you feel less bad te temporarily. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't help you feel good. And the reason for that isn't because it's ineffective. It's just the wrong tool for the job. For maybe, maybe 10% of the people that go in to see the doctor, maybe 10% of the people are going to get the kind of relief they're looking for from that antidepressant. But the other 90% are 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 kind of out of luck because this thing is not addressing the imbalance that they actually have. That SSRI, selective serotonin re-up and reuptake inhibitor, like a Prozac style drug, is working here. It's helping mm -hmm. increase serotonin levels in your brain where 10% of your serotonin is. If 90% of your serotonin is in your gut, we have to do something at the level of your gut. And that's I where- mean, this, this, that, Those numbers are mind blowing, you guys. Like if this is blowing your mind, put it in the Q&A because that's the only thing that we have open. But like mind blown, 90% of those happy neurotransmitters come from the gut, Yep. not from the brain. Yep. And not just serotonin. And this is important. So serotonin, we sort of think of as the happiness neurotransmitter, right? If you don't have enough of it, you're going to be sad. But we also have dopamine that helps us be motivated. We have GABA that helps us relax when we're stressed out. We've got oxytocin that helps us connect with other people and you know sort of be relatable. We've got melatonin, which people think of as just the sleep hormone, but 80% of that is made in the gut. The list goes on and on and on. Um, mm -hmm. So the gut, that's why we call it the second brain because it's actually the source of most of these neurotransmitters. And so, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a mind blow because we didn't even know this stuff 10 years ago, right? We knew that the gut and the brain communicated because like when you're stressed out, a lot of people get stomach aches and they get constipated or diarrhea or something like but that. But we thought it was like an old wives tale. Yes, exactly. These old wives knew what they were talking about, right? right? But they, but they <laughs> a woman, the because science. it was a woman, right? <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't say that, but like, ha -ha. <laughs> but, but they didn't, but, but none of us knew the science until, right. in, in, until recently to be able to say, let's change these bacteria. And, oh, look, they made more serotonin and, oh, look, people were less depressed, right? So like that science exists now. And because that science exists, someone like me, you know, I, a lot of times people call me a psycho nutritionist because I'll use nutrition 
or specific nutrients like the theanine we just talked about to say, all right, how can I use this nutrient or this combination of nutrients to change what happens across the gut brain axis to help somebody feel better? So we're using nutrition mm -hmm. to change biochemistry, but then how does that biochemistry affect psychology? How does it help someone with their mood or their focus mm -hmm. or their energy or et cetera? So it's, it's, a, it's a, like, I love this and I love the psychonutrition and I love that psychobiotics are a new trending word. Right. And I'm right. like, wait, haven't, hasn't Dr. Sean been doing that for eight years now? Like talking about <laughs> psychobiotics, like to help the gut. But when we talk about the gut brain connection in your, in your book and in Lane asked what the name of the book is, it's mental fitness. Everyone yep. needs the book. It's fantastic. And it's on Audible. So when I walk, I listen to it and it's it, I love it. But you talk about or use the example of the gut brain connection of having two really high end computers or high end TVs. And then you've got like a phone cable between the two right. rather than like a high def, like you want the wire fiber, like what's the coolest thing right now, the 5G, yada, yada. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, how do you get that? And that's kind of what you're talking about. Like, how do you get that communication to be the best that it can be so that you can show up as that optimized person? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that, and that's where this, this idea of a system comes in, right? There's things you can do in the brain, there's things you can do in the gut, but really importantly, there's things you can do in that communication cable that runs between them. And that cable is what we call axis, right? So when mm -hmm. we when we say gut brain axis, the axis is the communication network. And it's a full network. It's not just your nervous system. Like there's literally, there's a there's a nerve called the vagus nerve that mm -hmm. runs from the brain to the gut. And out of out of out of 10 signals that go back and forth. Nine of them go from the gut to the brain. So 90% of the signals are gut to brain with the vagus nerve. But it's not just the vagus nerve. It, there's other nerves that go. There's your circulatory system, right? Your blood. Um, mm -hmm. There's your immune system. Your immune system, it, probably 70, 80% of your immune system lives in your gut. The rest of it is distributed throughout your body, including in your brain. So you're, if we have a stronger immune system, it's good for our gut and it's good for our brain and it's good for our mood separate mm -hmm. from the fact that it's protecting us from viruses and bacteria and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, uh, th th this is, this is, so when I formulate products, I look at that whole system and I say, what could be out of balance that is causing somebody to be lower on that, on that continuum we talked about just a few minutes ago? What is, you know, somebody who's optimized versus somebody who's depressed, what is different in those people? So let's, let's optimize that. And so we'll put together products like happy juice, right? It, mm -hmm. is, it, is a good example of that that it makes people feel happier because it's adjusting each step of that. Each signaling. one of the, each one of those things though, right? right it's exactly. adjusting each one of those things. And I just want to pause for one second and talk, because you talked about immune function. 70% of our immune function comes from the gut, but also from that vagus nerve, your yeah. gut brain connection and all, and all of the nerves. And a lot of times there's an underactive immune system, which gives yeah. us certain issues. Like let's unpack this for a little bit. And then overact, having an overactive immune system, you shared this uh, on a, a different somewhere that that brings in, and it's probably from the book, um, allergies, yeah. like yeah. seasonal allergies, allergies to specific foods, all of that stuff. Like let's talk about, can we share a little bit more about the immune system and yeah. underactive or overactive? Yeah. So, so your immune system, we think of in, in, in two ways nowadays, right? We used to only think of your immune system as a shield, something that protected us from the outside world, viruses, bacteria, cancer mm -hmm. cells, that kind of stuff. Nowadays, we think of it both as a shield and as a communication organ. So it's helping that communication across the whole gut brain axis. So if your immune system is stronger, you're less likely to pick up a virus. If your immune system is stronger, you're more likely to be resilient, right? So your vigor is higher, your burnout is lower. There's all kinds of ways we can measure that. And our, our, our laboratory group was one of the first ones to be able to show that, if, that if you had a stronger immune system, you were not just stronger physically, you were stronger psychologically. And so that, that sort of kicked off this whole idea of the immune system as a communication organ. Um, but there's ways we can naturally improve that. So if you eat mushrooms, if you, um, we can take an extract from yeast, we can give you, there's all kinds of things we can give you to, to not to stimulate your immune system, but to do a different thing called priming your immune system, which basically makes your immune system like, 
it pays attention better to attacking things it's supposed to, and it leaves alone things that, it's, that, that, are, that are safe, that it doesn't, that it doesn't need to attack. Mm -hmm. And what that means is that if your immune system is suppressed because you're stressed or you're sleep deprived or all the things that can suppress our immune system, it'll bring it back up to normal. But if your immune system is overactive and you have food intolerances or allergies or, or autoimmune system diseases, it can bring, yeah, that's, you, those are all. You, yeah, you were talking about autoimmune disorders with the overactive, Yeah, like yeah, just can, to pause there so that people understand, because I know that this was mind blowing for me. I was like, wait, rheumatoid arthritis is related to having an overactive immune right. system. It makes no sense, really. Right. It's, 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 so your immune system is overactive. And if there's no virus or bacteria or cancer cell to fight against, your overactive immune system is going to fight against something and it starts to attack you. And if it's, if it's attacking your joints, that's rheumatoid arthritis. If it's attacking your, your skin, that can be psoriasis or eczema. If it's attacking your, um, your, I mean, it'll, it'll attack everything, right? It's, yeah. and, and so, so many of these autoimmune system diseases are that your immune system is overactive and we can calm that naturally. So the same things that we use to bring a low immune system back up to normal are the same effective things to bring a high immune system back down to normal. That's the priming effect. And when we do that, all those symptoms go away, right? People feel physically better, but they also feel psychologically better because of the signaling between the gut brain axis. It's just, it, it, it's like all this new science isn't just interesting because it's new science. It's, it's immediately applicable to everybody's lifestyle, allowing us to thrive in the, in the stressful world that we live in now. Right. Being in that optimized era, you guys, if you are learning something about immune function, drop an immune in the question and answer center. If there's something that you want us to go back and pause on, but I just want to make one more point because you brought this up in the book that when you have an underactive immune system, you're more prone to sleep disorders and respiratory problems. Like, can yes. you share a little bit about that? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so I actually, I actually just did a, um, I did an article and a, and a, and a video about this. And I, and I mentioned it the other day on another, on another webinar and everybody said, where's that video? I can't find it anywhere. It hasn't posted yet. Um, <laughs> it's, it's all about long COVID, right? So this, this goes yeah. right into, right into the question that you're asking about the immune system. So if your immune system is suppressed because of some of the things I said before, sleep deprivation, stress, poor diet, all that kind of stuff can suppress our immune system, putting us at higher risk for catching a virus. So if you're at a suppressed immune system, like many of us, overstressed people, uh, you're going to be more likely to catch, the. Let, let's just use COVID for, for an example, you're likely to get infected more readily, right? Because your immune system is down. You'll get an upper respiratory tract infection like COVID. Hopefully your immune system will rally and you'll kick it out and you won't have any you know, long, long infection period. But there's a huge percentage of people post COVID, maybe 30%, maybe 50% that experience what's called long COVID, right? Persistent symptoms after the virus is cleared. They, they have trouble regulating their blood pressure. They're tired. They have brain fog. They're just, they, they just don't feel good, right? Their, their mood is down. They just, they feel awful. And the virus is many months in the past. That's long COVID or post COVID syndrome. Mm -hmm. It shares a lot. So what this article and video is all about is that it shares so many uh, symptoms with other syndromes like fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, uh, Lyme disease infections that are sort of you know chronic chronic symptoms that go on, and all of those share symptoms with something that we study called leaky gut. And so it's like the light bulb moment is, hey, wait a minute. It is related to the immune system and it is related to being over inflamed and things like that. But what do those have in common? The gut. And if we can look at the gut as maybe the gut is out of balance, maybe your gut is leaky, maybe your microbiome is, is what we call dysbiotic, too many bad bacteria, not enough good bacteria. You know, it, it goes back to this idea we were just talking about, Dana, that, that the gut brain axis is this signaling system. And if one piece of that system is out of balance, you see this domino effect of imbalance going through all the others. And so what we need to do is not just set up one domino and hope the others take care of themselves, but we need to actively go in and say, let's set up this domino and then let's set up this domino and put them all back in balance. And that's where people thrive. That's when they feel optimized again, when all the dominoes are in line. Yeah, because as the more and more that I have these conversations with you, which I absolutely love, the more and more we all come to understand that really the easiest first step 
to get toward that optimized place is to look to your gut and give your gut some building blocks because right. leaky gut, leaky gut seems to be like a common denominator when in so many different, so many things, exactly different issues. And you don't necessarily go to the doctor and say, Hey, I have leaky gut. Like, right. what are they going to do for you? So let's talk about tactical solutions and let's bring in why is happy juice just the easiest first step toward solving the domino, bringing the dominoes back yep. up and getting them to fall in a positive way toward the optimized level of that stress scale versus taking the dominoes down, bringing you down toward yep. the disease state. Yeah. So, so, so being really tactical about it. I like, I like that because, because like I said, we can take the science and we can build it into something that actually helps somebody today. And so, you know, let's, let's say you are that person that just feels stressed and exhausted and brain fog and you know you're not being very effective at the things that you want to do you go to the doctor and you say you say that and like i said before the doctor doesn't have anything for that because there isn't anything that is systemically helping you so we have to think to ourselves okay is this a brain thing is this a gut thing is it an immune system thing to be perfectly honest a lot of times we don't know and so we don't have a good test that somebody can go in and say here's a test for leaky gut Here's a test for immune system imbalance. Here's a test for, you know, neurotransmitter disruptions. We can measure them in the laboratory, but they're not mainstream tests that you can just go and order. So you're kind of stuck not knowing, all right, should I do something for my gut or do something for my brain? So why not do a little bit for the whole system? That's what happy juice is, right? We strategically sat down and said, okay, there's probably something going on in the gut. Let's give specific strains of bacteria, what we call psychobiotics now, specific strains of prebiotic bacteria that are known to increase serotonin or known to lower cortisol or known to increase GABA. If we do that for somebody, they're going to feel better. But just like our theanine example before, why should we stop at just those psychobiotics? Because that's one piece of the puzzle. Let's also do prebiotics because there's some prebiotics that are known to increase resilience. That's different than solving your depression. Resilience is a different aspect of mood state. So let's do that. All right, so the microbiome is better. But wait a minute, what if you have leaky gut? That involves the tissue of your, of your gut lining. There's nutrients we can give for that, like glutamine and zinc carnosine and things like that. Okay, the gut is better, but it's not just the gut, remember? It's the gut-brain axis. So let's go outside of the gut and talk about lowering inflammation or improving blood flow or priming the immune system. Like we just had a discussion about that. We can give you mushroom extracts and yeast extracts to get the immune system sort of properly primed. And then, and then let's not forget about the brain. The brain is still important. That's where the theanine comes in. And that's where flavonoids like pomegranate extract and pine bark extract and things like that, that can really help the brain not just remember better and solve problems better, but it speeds up the processing of the brain. So the brain solves problems, but solves them faster than it did before. So all of those, any one of those would help you feel somewhat better, but if we can put them all together, you're gonna feel a lot better and that's gonna help reset the whole system. And you're, and you're resetting the whole gut brain axis. So when you, we talk about happy juice, you just outlined like 900 things that it's going to do <laughs> to help us show up better, help you right. feel better, help support your gut, help support your brain, make you a little bit happier, help your immune function in one wrapped in a bow solution that you can take on a daily basis. Right, right, right. right. Exactly. Yeah. You can think, you can think of it as the, as the all in one solution because we've thought about it very strategically, you know, and, and, you know, not to say like, I don't want to toot our horn and say like, you know, oh, we've solved all the problems, right? As the science progresses, there's new things that we learn, you know? So like 10 years ago, we didn't know anything about psychobiotics. Now that's a big thing. Um, you know, a lot of those herbs that we use across the gut brain axis, sometimes people call them adaptogens because they help you adapt and deal with stress. So, some other herbs people will call nootropics because they help wake up your brain and get your, you know, boost your brain function and your brain power. So the more we learn about those sorts of things, the more we can build those in and make, ha ha make happy juice happier, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's another aspect of that gut brain axis that we can modulate or tweak and, you know, bring this new science in and do new and improved. I love it because it's really the easiest, this is the way I like to look at it. It's the easiest first step 
towards stepping in to feeling healthy. For the person that's listening, that's saying, okay, I, this is all great, but I want to get my hormones, I want to get my hormones tested. I want to get blood work done. I want this, that, yeah. and the other thing. How do we, how do we connect the dots there? Because I know from my own personal experience, I was in that fine category. I had all of the blood work, all the panels, all the everything. And I was fine. I was normal. Like, yep. go, go home. There's nothing wrong with you. But yep. I knew that I was languishing and that there had to be something better. And thankfully you came into my life and I got happy juice and I was able to move myself to optimize. But what do we do about that? I guess it goes back to the point that you made, like the doctor doesn't have the, the answer. Yeah. Yeah. And it also goes, and this is, this might be a little philosophical, but it, it, it goes to this idea of people who are in the middle of that chart that you put up, right? The people who mm -hmm. are fine, that's the normal situation out there in the world right now, right? It is perfectly normal for someone to right. feel, well, it's, let me not, let, let me say it differently. It's not normal, but it's typical. It is it's typical. been normalized. It's been, it's normalized. been normalized. Yeah. So it's right. typical that we see everybody's fatigued and everybody has brain fog and everybody has all these modern life symptoms, but that is not a normal human situation. Normal human should be in a state that we call flourishing, which is good energy, good mood, good resilience, pops out of bed in the morning, has a very productive, impactful day, and then relaxes at night and gets a wonderful night's sleep, right? And as soon as I say that, I can just hear the eyes rolling of all the people <laughs> who are watching this going like, oh my gosh, pie in the sky, this is this guy's full of crap, right? right? That's not my world. That's not my reality. Yeah, he doesn't know my stress. Be, it should be your reality, right? Because our if our bodies are in tune across all this stuff that we're talking about, you can you can step into that stress and get things done and you can you can go into fight or flight when you need to but then you can go into rest and digest when you need to and your body functions like a like a finely tuned machine that's what it should be but it's off because of some of these things that we've discussed and we can I, put it back where it needs to be i love that and it brings us all back to the beginning of letting go of overwhelm as a lifestyle yes you guys, if you are here because you are ready to let go of overwhelm as a, as a lifestyle, but not sure how, reach out to the person that invited you to this webinar and just start with happy juice because that starts with the whole gut brain access, brings it all together. There might be other things. These There are other solutions like Mood Plus, Kids Mood. There's all kinds yep. of other little add-ons that you can together with the person that invited you to this group, figure out what might be the right solution. But it's always start with happy juice. And I want to just point out that happy juice is not solving your problem. It's not solving, if you're depressed, you're on, one, on a number one on the scale, happy juice is not solving your problem, but happy juice is helping your body function better so yep. that you have the energy, a little bit better mood. So now you have a now you have the time or you've created the mental, the time space in your head to go exercise, to prioritize going to sleep better, to doing the other things. Yep. It's I'm so glad you said that because we that's what we see all the time is that happy juice can be that first piece of the puzzle for people to sort of give them that bandwidth, right? They feel better, their resilience is better, their energy is better, the, you know, all that kind of, they're like, and once they're able to go, then they can do exactly what you just said, Dana. They they almost subconsciously start doing those other things that they know they're supposed to be doing. And for whatever reason, they haven't had the energy or the motivation or the bandwidth or whatever. And we see that behavioral change because they feel better, not the other way around. Right. Because you feel a little bit better, your gut is functioning a little bit better, like your gut brain connection is working better. In the book, you also share about after lowering that cortisol hormone, after getting your gut brain connection to work better, you talk about, you know, using yoga as an exercise and what's the benefit of yoga? Well, it's breath work, it's mental yeah. work, it's calming the mind, it's all the things. And I loved that particular example because, you know, 10 years ago, people would say, Dana, you need to, you need yoga. You need, you need yoga. And, and I was like, are you kidding me? I've got like 900 things going on and I don't have time. I'm not going to sit right. on my mat. Like there's no chance that I'm going to sit on that mat and do whatever. And you talk through like the benefits of like all the science behind the breath work behind, you know, getting calm in your mind, going through those poses, which are movement for your body and movement is another thing. 
But if you don't have the mental space and coming back to the whole point of this webinar, like optimizing your mood and your mindset so that you can let go of overwhelm as a lifestyle, this is a foundational building block right. toward allowing you to get into those other places. So I hope that you guys hear that. If you have any last questions, drop them in the Q&A below. But I just want to thank you, Dr. Sean, for your time. Always, I always walk away from these conversations learning something. You are one of my favorite people. I, absolutely, I absolutely, <laughs> Right back at you. <laughs> yeah, I absolutely love these conversations. You guys drop in the um, chats or the Q&A, just like give Dr. Sean a shout out, say thank you, and reach out to the person that invited you to this group and ask your questions to them. But definitely Happy Juice is the first step toward letting go of overwhelm and stepping in to really being your best. And that's what we're talking about. Like, exactly. Period. End of story. All right. Thank you so much for being here, Dr. Sean. Have an awesome day. Thank you guys My pleasure. for joining us. You too. All right. See you guys. Bye-bye.